Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem with Foundry VTT doing something slightly different. Um, we're looking at some theatre of the mind style approaches to creating adventures uh, and a little bit of uh, discussion or well, mm, is it a discussion when it's just me talking to myself? Possibly. Um, around the upcoming release of version 12 of Foundry and how that might impact us. So first of all, um, what we're coming, what's coming up on the channel in the not too distant future? We have pretty much finished Stormwreck Isle and the Fandelverum below, at least the first four chapters, which are very traditional tabletop battle map oriented ways of running games. And I think for those particular adventures that works quite well. However, we did have a request um, that I'm 100% behind, which is about building the Curse of Strahd campaign series now for any of you who've been perhaps playing for a while or um, you know have come across the curse of strad it is one of the great campaigns from D, &D. Uh, it's been around for a long time if you have had the pleasure of playing in that game with a particularly good dm it is just mwah, chef's kiss it is a beautiful module uh, so i definitely want to build that but we need to do it justice <laughs> we need to honour it for what it is. Um, and because it's a gothic horror, so it's very atmospheric and there's an awful lot going on, battle map after battle map after battle map is not going to do it the justice we want. Um, and there's so much atmospherics in it that we need to try and leverage that. So what you're looking at here is uh, the player one logged in as Sorryman, not that that's relevant, um, and this is the scene that currently they can see. So no battle map here, it's just an image. So first of all, uh, need to give some credit out for p people involved in this video um, with their assets and things. So I've been watching um, some Axiom, who is a subscriber to this channel as well. I've been looking at a couple of his videos, especially around Theatre of the Mind, and some of the stuff that he is doing is just beautiful. I will put a link in the description to that particular video. Please do go and watch it, um, because what he's doing is, is quite masterful around some of these things. I 100% stealing inspiration from that particular video um, and then making my own and, and playing with that. Um, because, yeah, <laughs> why reinvent the wheel when it's done so well the first time? Um, so this image you're looking at the moment, this one with the birds and things like that, uh, I nearly said stolen from the internet. It's not stolen from the internet. I got it from the internet. So to give credit to the right people, because we should, uh, it's called Dark Sky Texture by a lady called Ava Verion um, uh, from her Flickr account. Uh, she very specifically says in there, free to use. So uh, it's not stolen at all. Um, she's very kindly given anybody permission to use it, not me specifically, uh, which is great. I'll also pop, plop a link down in that as well, because I think it gives a nice backdrop. Um, but obviously, you know, use whatever you want can find uh, if you're not doing curse of strad this might be a totally inappropriate image <laughs> but for me this is kind of fits really nicely so uh axioms inspired the video itself and, and the way forward that we're going to be looking at in this video uh, background image here as well now we're also going to be looking at some image from Piram king so some of the when we were looking at some of the battle maps uh, potentially for using with curse of strad a couple of people mentioned that Piram king also does battle maps and things so we'll have a look at one of those in a bit as well so uh, again free to use which is absolutely fantastic and of course we also looked at Aeon Bar's Aeon Bar cartography um, and their maps previously so we're going to cover all of those things in there so just get those credits out of the way um, because when people are doing excellent work we sh that that we are allowed to use for free we absolutely should credit them okay right enough of that so what we're we looking at so we're looking at just the basic play area logged in as a player this is it uh, in the other screen i've got my dm control my foundry control here and there's a number of things i can do so the first thing i can do is by clicking something over there i can bring up a map 
in the center of the screen for the players all to be able to see um, and obviously this is a player version of the map it's it's a nice detailed map with the creases in it to make it look like it's been folded etc uh, Piram King thank you very much Nick in that one um, but I can also click another tile over there in the background and switch that map out for an image of again Piram King's images here um, for the death house or their version of the death house anyway uh, and I can click through again and change that image um, so the gates of Boravia are right here uh, and I can switch between any of those and I can turn those off so it just gives a really nice way to do theatre of the mind you know you're you know as the as the mist begins to part before you you know you can see um, you know this old gothic house um, tucked away in the woods whatever whatever description you're going with you can include that and pop up an image to go with it and of course take that image down they go into the house and you want to transition to a battle map well of course that's just what you do and we we enter into there we transition to the battle map and this is again this is Anabar cartography's version of the map um, and I've just put the standard foundry mist um, weather over this uh, it's Ravenloft <laughs> it's, it's mist everywhere constant mist um, so I've just got that on here and it creates a nice atmospheric scene for us so I can just transition between theatre of the mind stuff to battle maps um, so I am definitely using um, Piram King's images again free um, for a lot of the theatre of the mind stuff if I just switch over this is his version of the same battle map we were just looking at uh, and again you look how beautiful the map is it's already kind of got misty on it and then I've put the, the mist over the top again now it is beautiful um, which do I prefer out of these two myself I prefer this one it's a bit cleaner um, it's it's not so cluttered I'm probably going to go with this version it, it's not that it's a better it's just a preference for me but of course there's, there's both lots there you choose whichever one you want or do your own or find another version <laughs> there's plenty of people out there doing these things but both of these are free so pick what you like so just to uh, sort of say I'm going to add um, Aeon Bars a cartography I'm going with those battle maps but I'm going to be using Piram King for the various images and stuff um, for my theatre of the mind this one this one and other things which is really nice okay right that's my intro that's a long introduction isn't it so I'm going to show you how this is created in a moment um, but before I do that um, I've got another version another version of this which works in a slightly different way very slightly um, but again it's preference and I'll show you this one as well so again I can bring up that battle map in the same way I know you're thinking it looks exactly the same um, but I can also transition to those tiles uh, using a different method so I will show you both of those methods um, pros and cons of both okay but we will go through that do want to talk about uh, for a moment about the upcoming version 12 um, of Foundry because that will change some stuff uh, because I've been umming and ahhing about what to do about that and how to support you guys um, because some of you will transition over some of you won't um, which is fine of course it is you, you know you've got to do what works uh, if I don't transition over it means I can't help people with version 12 if I do transition over then I'm on version 12 and not necessarily help able to help with version 11 stuff so what is version 12 bringing to the table for us what will it change you can go and watch the the dev diaries go and watch those they will explain it in a lot more detail but there are some really nice things that are happening I'm going to show you one of the problems we have currently in foundry with the ambience weather effects if I change this to rainstorm and just make this particularly heavy um, we can move Simon indoors um, but it's raining inside this house <laughs> and that's probably not something we want now at the moment foundry 11 version 11 we've got a choice of having weather effects on or off that's it it's either the whole scene or none of the scene 
one of the really nice things that is coming as version 12 is we will be able to choose selections or sections such as walling off this entire house as a separate section and then being able to apply different or no effects specifically to that area. So we could wall off this house and say no weather inside, no weather here. And that means you'd have this lovely heavy rain outside. As soon as you're inside, there's no rain in this bit. And that is going to be really, really good for changing these atmospheric ones. This heavy rain, I'm never going to use it if they're going to go indoors at any point because it's raining indoors. It's just in the way. It doesn't make sense. So that's one thing it's going to bring for us. And that's definitely a good reason to upgrade to version 12. Now that ability to do that is all part of their new... Um, regions and triggers stuff that they're bringing in. So when they were looking at what to develop next, the thing that won the vote was essentially, yeah, these areas, trigger areas and things like that, replicating a lot of stuff that Monk's Active Tiles triggers has been built to do for us because Foundry can't do it. So in Foundry 11, we can use Monk's Active Tile Triggers, and I've been using it and will be showing you using that in this video. But when we move over to version 12, we're not sure how effective the new version 12 stuff is going to be. But in theory, it will make the entire of Monk's Active Tile Triggers superfluous. I suspect there will still be some edge cases where it's useful, but Core Foundry will do that for us. So all the work on traps and things we did will change so we'll have to do a new traps video i know you love traps don't you um we'll have to do a new traps video using those new active triggers within foundry 12 itself but we'll have a play with that when we get there that's a good couple of months off uh so part of that transitioning from 11 to 12 or not transitioning what i thought we would do not starting today just want to show you a few bits what i thought we would do is build part of the curse of strad probably the death house and build that all up with some theater of the mind and some battle map, map stuff and get that kind of ready to go in version 11 then when version 12 comes along if we choose or when we choose to upgrade to version 12 we can use that as well as things like Stormwreck Isle as a case study of what do you guys need to do to bring your existing adventures in version 11 up to version 12 and it might be we have to redo loads of it everything with Monk's active tile triggers we have to bin and redo it might not be it might be we can still run Monk's Active Tile Triggers instead of using the version 12 stuff. So a bit of a ramble, um, but just to, uh, wanted to kind of give you a bit of direction of where we're going and that looming version 12. Let's get back to the core reason of this video, which is what we're doing with these things and how we're getting these to work, shall we? All right, so I'm going to switch over right here to my dm version on my actually in foundry as the dm to show you how this is working so i've got a couple of different scenes here this is the first scene that you were looking at okay so you can see actually that there is a series of tiles here one with a map on there's a tile here and a tile here each with those different images on and then our main background image is that one there we've got the weather effects on um, with with that that one from um, that one I took from Flickr, um, Ava uh, Verion, remember who it was. Uh, so these are just tiles with those images on. Okay, that's really really easy. We literally go to our chart, our tile selector, and go right. I want that one. We drag it in. There it is. And then what I've done is is hide those tiles by default. But the how we're powering this is actually a series of other tiles up here just using Monk's active tile trigger. So this is my map one and again Axiom I've pretty much stolen this directly from you. I've even put them in the same place as you did. <laughs> Not even trying to pretend this is my idea. Um, so all this is it's got an image of the map so that I know that this button effectively this active button here relates to the map um, and uh, I've added some triggers on it and in this way that I've done it here is it will hide the, all of the other tiles. So the other two tiles, it will hide them and it will show the map tile. That's it. 
to activate this, I've got the GM only can do it and they double click on it to do to make it work. And I have hidden this tile so the players can't see it. OK, it sits outside of the main area. They won't be able to see it. Lovely. Uh, for this one, it's basically the same setup. Whoop, why are we over there? So I chose again, I chose the image that matches with the tile on the main scene so that I know which one it's going to show because, you know, I'm a bit simple. Um, again, only the GM can do it with a double click. And the actions are is to hide the map tile and the other tile and show this one, or not show this one, but show the corresponding one in the main area. And then same with this one, exactly the same. It's going to hide the other two tiles on the main area and show that one. So it's really quite easy to set up. I just put this one on here as well. All this one does is under actions, it just hides all the other tiles so I can effectively reset it. Double click that one, it resets those. So just double clicking on these, you can see it activates those tiles differently. Now in the DM view, you can see um, you know, you can see the ones that are deactivated, which is why they look like that. But you just saw the player view of that. Players can only see the actual one that's active. So this works beautifully. Um, and again, you know, just the images that we choose to use is, is what's important. Now, with this method, this is not necessarily the, the, the best method. But the advantage of is because we have different tiles, um, if you note where this tile is placed, it's in a different place to the map. And it's a different place to this tile, which actually goes right over the right hand side. So because we've got different tiles, we can have them of different sizes in different places. And of course, we could have multiple tiles showing at once. You might want a, one in the top right, a different one underneath, and then something over on the left hand side. And you could have all three of those show at the same time. Uh, and hidden by other buttons and stuff. So it gives you lots of flexibility with the size of the images and things where you want to put them. So that is definitely one way to do it. Now in the other version of this scene, which looks like the same, but it act, it, it works differently, uh, we are doing something slightly different. So again, I've got my buttons here. So if we look at this first one for the map, what this is doing is it is showing the tile with the map on but it's hiding only one other tile. Now the reason for that is, is this one other tile here has a series of images attached to it. So it's got the, it's got the house, uh, so it's got the, well, Count's Manor is what the, the picture's called, but it's the death house image. And then this one's got the gates of Barovia uh, image as well. So we've got multiple images on there on the same tile. So for our buttons at the top, what we're doing is make sure we're hiding the map tile, make sure we're hiding the main image tile, and then switching the image in that tile to number one. So if I just click edit here, you can see switch tile image for that tile, not the map one, the other one. In fact, actually, I'll tell you what we do. Can we move that one out of the way for the moment? Move that one out of the way at the moment. So we're talking about this tile here with the house on. OK, so it's going to switch this tile to use image one. They're going to change to image one when we press that. And I've just got this blur effect on to transition between the two. So when I look at the next button, this is doing exactly the same. Make sure that map one is hidden. It's going to make sure this tile is showing and it's going to change the image on that tile to tile two. Uh, and again, I've got a fade on that one. Um, and we can change these to different effects if we want to. All right, so again, this tile here is the one that holds, got, only got two images, but we can load that up with loads if we want to. Uh, and my final trigger one up here is the same as before. Of course, I've only got two tiles to hide. So under those actions, hide the map tile, or hide that one. So the advantage with this one is it's really simple to do you just load those up and each of your buttons just changes the tile here um, so there's it's quicker to do in fact the disadvantage is you need to make sure all your images will fit appropriately into that same one tile size whatever size that is of course you could create a second tile and have different images appearing on both of them if you wanted to do that 
So two different ways of doing it, completely up to you which way is going to work for you, um, for your map. Um, my only, the negative of doing this one is um, is you're going to end up potentially with lots of different images and as a GM it might not be clear which one's actually showing, um, possibly, because yeah, we're now showing the death house, we're now showing this one, but because that tile is naturally on top you can see it, we're back to the death house, we're back to the map. It's not necessarily clear because those other tiles, we can kind of still see them. Um, but I think this is a beautiful way forward for something like Curse of Strahd, being able to just show off those beautiful images um, from Hippiram King or whomever else you choose to use. You know I can't do art. I'm forced to uh, use other people's stuff. Um, lovely. Absolutely beautiful. But then... When we need to, we can switch to those battle maps and use those. I've still got rain on here. So once they're into the house, I can switch over to a scene like this and run it in a more traditional um, battle map kind of way. Now, actually, for the death house, you might choose that this isn't particular. Certainly the ground floor, there's, there's not very little kind of combat here. You might choose to do that all through Theatre of the Mind. So you could have, for example, a main theatre of the mind where you are using it for navigating the map, and then you have, you know, and for your intro screens, such as you approach towards that, and then change scene to have a series of different scenes um, for when you're actually exploring a particular location, and not use a battle map at all. Of course, you can. And Curse of Strahd will lend itself quite nicely to doing that. You don't need to use battle maps at all for Curse of Strahd um, because it's so atmospheric. All fear to the mind works brilliantly for it. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the mixture because I think it also forces us to continue developing our skills um, and working out how to do things, especially when version 12 comes along. Bit of a rambly one, a bit of a mixture as well, bit of discussion, bit of uh, bit of showing you how to do stuff. Um, but please do go and look at Axiom's um, video link in the description because uh, he's using it in a slightly different way. Um, but it's really, really nice. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching.